you could be forgiven for missing an announcement that came out of Federal Labor this week. On the 20th of June, Attorney General Mark Dreyfus appointed the Honourable Justice Mordecai Bromberg, known as Morty Bromberg, as President of the Australian Law Reform Commission for a five-year term. He is, without a doubt, the most radical, the most hard-left activist that the federal court bench has yet seen. This is the judge responsible for holding that there was a duty upon a minister in making decisions about whether to approve mining projects to take reasonable care to avoid causing personal injury or death to Australian children arising from the emission of carbon dioxide into the Earth's atmosphere. Thankfully, this decision was overturned on appeal after what could only be described as a frolic of judicial activism, otherwise known as judges making law as they go along instead of leaving it to the people as represented through the parliament. That's known as the Sharma case. On appeal, the Chief Justice quite rightly observed that any climate change policy is a matter of politics and not properly a matter to be dealt with as a component of the law of negligence. In other words, that's a job for politicians. It's not a job for judges to make political policy. Justice Bromberg was a judge on the bench in the case of Rosato. Now, Rosato was where it was resolved, but ultimately the first instant decision is one that decided that a person who is employed as a casual and receives a casual leave loading to compensate them for the sick and holiday leave that people in less flexible employment types receive is nevertheless entitled to paid sick leave, annual leave and all the other loadings that permanent employment um, members get if they should happen to work regular hours for a period of time. The result was that businesses were left in the limbo of facing class actions from employees trying to double dip as a result, claiming both the paid leave and the casual leave loading at once. It had to be overturned by the High Court too. Justice Bromberg is the same judge who decided that Andrew Bolt of this network was guilty of breaching Section 18 capital C of the Racial Discrimination Act in a decision that took a really restrictive approach to free speech. Now, given you might consider my comments on this case coloured by my employment, let's go instead to what the ABC's Jonathan Holmes from Media Watch had to say about it. He said, Justice Bromberg's interpretation of the Racial Discrimination Act was, quote, profoundly disturbing because it reinforced concerns that Section 18C creates, quote, one particular area of public life where speech is regulated by tests that simply don't apply anywhere else and in which judges, who are never, for all of their pontifications, friends of free speech, get to do the regulating. When even the ABC think you're leaning too far to the censorious totalitarian left, well, that's really saying something. Justice Bromberg, to put it lightly, just does not have a good track record. Now, the Australian Law Reform Commission might just seem like a minor bureaucratic post. Don't be fooled. It is the research engine behind substantial legal change affecting our economy, society and culture. One look at the ALRC's report earlier this year about whether faith-based schools have a right to operate according to their ethos shows how it's hardly a conservative body by nature. But allowing it to be led by a person with a long-term record as a Labor activist is downright scary. The politics of the ALRC works like this. Labor refers to the ALRC issues that it regards as sensitive, divisive or controversial. The kind of things that it would never ask for a mandate for or an election because it would show Australians their radical underbelly. The report that the ALRC delivers is used then as a justification for implementing laws that would otherwise have been well outside the appetite of the democratic process. By appointing a person who once sought Labor pre-selection in the 2001 election, a person who has carried a Labor membership card with enough commitment that he belonged to one of Labor's formalised factions, 
and whose current beliefs, as demonstrated through his judgments, show a willingness to use extreme judicial activism to achieve political ends without democratic accountability? Well, Mr Dreyfus has given an important signal. It's not just a signal that everything he has said about being committed to merit-based and apolitical processes was just empty talk designed only to slur his opponents. It is a signal that federal Labor is not content to be a mainstream party. It has designs on cultural and economic change that is reflective of the hard socialist, redistributionist social engineers. That's what this appointment shows. And Australians should be very concerned about it. But let's stop and think. If this is the kind of activist he would appoint to the Australian Law Reform Commission, just imagine what he will do to the High Court.